Hey guys, what's up? Um, last night I worked on this. Uh, recently I've been watching the Ultra Hardcore series by the Minecraft server guys. Um, and I was just, I've been thinking about the sorts of things I would be doing in the situation. Um, basically it's a PvP thing. And it's basically just this survival sort of nightmare thing. Um, anyway, so I was thinking about uh, simple, well not really simple, but uh, fairly resource inexpensive traps that you could build um, in order to like kill your enemies without direct combat. Uh, and this is something that I came up with. Now, most of you are probably aware of um, the trick, how you can pick items up through the corner of blocks like that. Redstone's on a pressure plate. Oh no, I've fallen into a pit of lava. Um, I'm going on the assumption that you don't have an enormous amount of iron and want to use it on things like armor instead, and also are not going to be reliably lucky enough to get slime balls and and more more expensive resources like that. Um, so it's a fairly simple trap. All it requires is obviously a fair chunk of redstone, but that's not too hard to find um, in large amounts. Uh, I haven't been particularly efficient with it. You could definitely cut down the, the uh, amounts that you'd have to use. Um, but yeah, the main thing is the iron uh, is you, this only uses a handful of pistons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pistons, and that's probably more than you need. Uh, and this will reliably um, kill someone who goes around that corner or trap them, drop them into the pit. Um, now, the reason there's the gravel there is because I was also, since everyone in Ultra Hardcore is going to be super cautious and, you know, check around corners slowly and, um, and you know, in suspicious situations like this, they're going to check for traps when they're entering someone else's tunnels and things. Um, I tried to implement a fail-safe system, unless you start digging out the entire area or tunneling th around the corner or something um, then you pretty much cannot avoid it. If you go through the corner uh, or try and dig out these gravel blocks to see if there's a pressure plate around the corner as would be the most obvious way to prevent yourself falling victim to one of these corner traps um, then yeah it'll trigger. So basically this system here, these three torches, are the triggers, or are the output of the trap. Alright, if you pick that up, um, this torch outputs. And if these gravel blocks, either any of these gravel blocks are broken, then these torches break, um, meaning these torches go on, sending the signal. Oh, there you go as you can see. So, <clears throat> pretty much this output wire goes into a, I believe it's called a monostable circuit, I just call it a pulse generator or something. Um, it, it limits the the length of the pulse to uh, a single tick in this case. Um, only when the output is turned on. Anyway, uh, so that goes across here to these pistons, and that's down there to prevent uh, wire crossing uh, with that torch. And then down here on a slight delay to there. So basically what happens is these three push for like a tick. They push it and then instantly retract. And then these ones wait two ticks and then push. They do the same. 
So these ones get pushed out into there, and then a block gets pushed up this way, and you just have a, a little gap in the walkway up this way so that it's not too far. Uh, and then these push, and then this entire path here is clear, and there's just a little wall of blocks in there. Um, now obviously you'd have lava, lava below this or something, um, preferably suspended on pressure plates so that the items don't get burned, things like that. Now, um, yeah, it took me a while to figure out how to get the failsafe system to work properly, and then gravel works because it falls. Um, the reason is, I had a problem with this. This piston, because of the the um, block update switch bug, the pistons, which are powered diagonally, are powered, but do not update, meaning that they won't extend. But, now that it's updated, it's um, extended. So that piston is extended. If I remove that... Oh wait, if, silly me. But if if you remove that and then update it again, it retracts without um, without a change in power at the time it retracts. It's just the block update. So the problem I was having was if this was powered and then you removed this block and these were solid blocks, not falling ones, um, then this piston would extend and reveal the trap, ruining the failsafe system. What you want is for if any of these blocks adjacent to the corner are destroyed, for it to um, set off the trap. So, it's set, the trap is set, and then it updates, but the other pistons act normally. So this one is like that. Uh, so, I'll just show you how that piston being extended like that do isn't actually that much of a problem. I've also got a dispenser up there, which will, with extreme reliability, leave the block in the right place, or leave the item in the right place. Damn it. Ah, damn it, I ruined it. <laughs> okay. So. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Okay, so this button uh, does the dispenser, puts the item on the pressure plate. So now, if I walk into that block, and unless I'm sneaking around the corner and also get lucky with the placement of the item on the pressure plate, then uh, I will pick up the block and set off the trap. If I break any of these four gravel blocks, the trap will trigger. Uh, now, so I'm standing here, alright? I have to react very quickly for that to not kill me. And even then, I didn't react quickly enough because I fell through this block, meaning I would have gone into the pit. Um, so, yeah. Basically, you need to, like, jump instantly onto this or something like that. Uh, which... Obviously, if you're being cautious, you're not really going to be doing. Oops. <laughs> okay. So. The trap is fairly simple. Not the simplest of things. Not exactly an easy thing to build. But quite simple. Now, this dispenser is full of cobblestone. Um... Oops. Um, these trap doors prevent the cobblestone from sw straying that too far that way, uh, and out of, out of your reach. Um, with this setup, if without the trap doors, the blocks will spread around, and sometimes, very rarely, they'll fall off the edge here. Uh, to prevent that. Um, these trapdoors were put in place, which not only prevents them falling off the edge, but with like 99% of the time, it'll prevent the blocks from being too far out for you to 
um, pick up if you sneak around the corner like this. Um, like, it's very, very rare that uh, that will ever happen. I, I would shoot out most of that stack of cobblestone and then sneak around the corner and there'd only be like two in that place. So it's quite reliable. Um, I could definitely make it more reliable though if I had the dispenser like here facing that way or something um, and use the trick with a glass pane or something but this was just uh, you know what I thought of at the time. So the wiring is fairly simple um, not too hard to comprehend. You just have all of these need to be off when the trap is set. All these three output torches leading into one wire, uh, which leads into a pulse limiter, um, which leads to the outputs. Now this is down here. Yeah, to trigger that. Uh, now, if these blocks are destroyed, um, then obviously it reveals the trap. You just need to hollow out this area so that the blocks can be pushed successfully. Then line this area with blocks, make it look as natural as possible. This was just a prototype of the same sort of thing. Uh, I'm not sure if this one works, but I figured it out afterward. Oh wait, this one's much simpler. Anyway, uh, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, you know, etc. See ya.